Hello, my name is Catherine Gertz. And I'm the Registrar of the Art Collection of Himmel, the Hill Museum and Manuscript Library in Collegeville, Minnesota. This installment of my Himmel at Home series comes to you from my home, specifically my dining room in St. Paul, Minnesota. This is part four of my series, How to Read a Print, Who Made It? To figure that out, first we can look at the style. Here are two details from two different prints created in the same time and place, Antwerp in the late 16th century. These details are of the same subject, a heavily muscled man's back. The back on the left was designed by Martin von Heemskirk, and the one on the right was designed by Martin de Vos. The heavy musculature is a dead giveaway that they were both influenced by the style of the Italian Renaissance, best illustrated in the works of Michelangelo, as seen in this detail from the Sistine Chapel ceiling. Both of these artists had, in fact, been to Italy, de Vos for about eight years and Heemskirk for about four. So same period, similar backgrounds, same inspiration in general style, but obviously not the same artist. Heemskirk's figure is more distorted and even stylized. Look at those wing-like muscles and those sinuous twisting hands. And de Vos's is more realistic. Heemskirk and de Vos did the drawings, the designs for these engravings, but they didn't do the engraving. Usually engraving and printing in this period were done by different artists with different skills, not in composition, but in the techniques of engraving. So Heemskirk and de Vos did detailed designs of these prints and then handed them off to some of Antwerp's great engravers. Actually, Heemskirk was almost certainly not even in Antwerp when he designed this print. Johann Weyricks from the Weyricks family of engravers engraved the Heemskirk design, and Jan Sadler from the Sadler family of engravers engraved the de Vos. As with the composition, the works are technically related. The engraving technique is related. Uh, so again, same place, same style. But again, the engraving shows two different hands. Sadler's work is freer and more precise. So not surprisingly, he is the more uh, known of the two artists. The great late 16th century Harlem artist, Hendrik Goltzius, was an innovator in engraving techniques as well as a great print designer. The composition of his works are distinguished by his fluid and relatable style. Basically, Goltzius' Saint Andrew, as seen here, has more life and personality than, say, de Vos's or Heemskirk's figures. Looking at this detail of Goltzius' enunciation, we can also see his innovative engraving technique. Goltzius is especially known for the way he created subtle shadows and depth in his work. To do this, he used a technique that he innovated known as dot and lasange. It's especially obvious here in the wrist of the Virgin. So the cross hatching creates, creates lasange shapes filled in with a dot. This is the larger annunciation engraving. While the engraving work is pure Goltzius, the design isn't in his usual style. It's from a series that Goltzius did experimenting with the styles of different artists. The artist he is copying in this engraving is the Italian, Italian mannerist Parmigianino, who died about a decade before Goltzius was even born. The face of the Virgin in Goltzius's work is completely different than the rounder and craggier faces of Goltzius's usual northern mannerism, early Baroque style, as seen in St. Andrew, but it is pure mid 16th century Parmigianino. Parmigianino's most famous characteristic in his work is his long necks, seen in his most famous work, the Madonna with the long neck in the Uffizi Gallery, seen here. While Goltzius's Madonna's neck doesn't quite reach the extreme that we see in Parmigianino's painting, the characteristic length is there. So when we put the two images close together, side by side, the relationship is obvious. Parmigianino was an innovative printmaker himself, but his print work looks absolutely nothing like this. It looks like this. So the Annunciation is Goltzius inspired by Parmigianino, not Goltzius copying Parmigianino. When looking at prints, we can assign the artist based on how they compose their work, how they form figures, their favorite themes, and other artistic tells like Parmigianino's long necks or Goltzius's dot and lasange. But the easiest way to tell who made a print is if you have a signature. But for some prints, this can be more complicated than simply reading the name off a work. 
one kind of signature is the monogram. Prints from the late 15th and early 16th century are especially likely to have these. This is the monogram of Albrecht Dürer, uh, often appearing at the bottom of his works, often on a tablet. A similar example is, is the HSB of Sebald Beham. Sometimes artists are only remembered for their monograms. The names represented by the letters have been lost to history. So in the Himmel collection, we have a full set of works by an artist known as the monogramist IS with the shovel. That is his official name, the monogramist IS with the shovel, because his works are signed with his IS monogram and often with uh, accompanied by this shovel um, ideogram. Coming back to work by those 16th century Antwerp artists that I was talking about a few minutes ago. This is the engraving the Sermon on the Mount from the 1582 to 1583 series, The Sorrows of the World. The bottom of the picture right here is the artist information rendered in Latin. So this is the detail of what they look like up close. So Martin de Vos designed it, M. de Vos, inventor. Inventor is a term used for print designer. Hieronymus W. Fecket, Fecket in Latin means he made, and is used to not the denote the engraver of a print. Hieronymus W. stands for Hieronymus Virix, another member of the Virix family of engravers. The last signature is said Larry Excud, uh, so Excud stands for Excudabot, printed in Latin, and denotes the publisher as the Sadler family, probably the famous Jan Sadler. This isn't too complicated, even when the artists change up the spelling of their names, as was common at the time. So Jan Sadler is also known as Johann Sadler, Hans Sadler, and Johannes Sadler. Often the names are abbreviated, so Han, uh, Jan Sadler is also Bla Sadler, as in this print designed by DeVos, St. Guido of Composa. Uh, you can also see that sometimes the surnames are spelled differently. Here, you can see they've dropped the E. And in this print of Theonis, uh, St. Theonis of Egypt, Jan Saller just becomes sad. But the Latin words also change. This print of Methuselah, engraved by Jan Saller, designed by Martin Voss, uses sculpted, carver in Latin, which is often spelled in these prints with an A instead of a U. In the same print, de Voss's role is only known as Voss here. Uh, as a designer is defined by figure, an abbreviation of figarabot or drawn. So there are several other potential Latin terms, but it seems like a good place to stop with the Latin. But that's still just in Latin. Similar designations appear on prints in other languages. French has its own versions, so does English, so does Italian, and so on. My reference document that I use in researching Western print rolls terms is 53 pages long. But as prints moved into the 19th and 20th centuries, this kind of information heavy signatures shifted into the hand signature, where the only thing you have to worry about is the intelligibility of the artist's handwriting. Thank you for listening to me today. You can see some of our collections online at behimmel.org, including our art collection at behimmel.org slash museum. For more information on the Hill Museum and Manuscript Library, please visit our website at behimmel.org. Thank you.